Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here today. We are back on the channel kicking off our very first Cosmic Eclipse deck profile and uh, I don't think there's much of a better way to do this than with one of the most hyped new cards from the set and of course that's going to be Reshiram and Zekrom. We have a Turbo, Reshiram and Zekrom list we're going to be looking at today and this is actually the same list that was featured in our recent testing rounds video as well. So if you guys want to see how this deck looks in action, I will be sure to have a link down below in the description for you guys to check that out as well. But let's get into this. Like I said, this is going to be the turbo version of the deck. No Naganadal, nothing like that. We're going all in with uh, Ends Resolve, the new supporter card, and just trying to, you know, turbo out as many energies as we can as quickly as possible to start nuking our opponent with Reshiram and Zekrom. So, of course, uh, we have four copies of Reshiram and Zekrom GX. This is a new tag team that we're getting in Cosmic Eclipse. But it has two different attacks, first of which for a fire and lightning energy, you discard any number of basic fire and lightning energy from your bench Pokemon. It does 90 for each one that you discard. So you only have to discard three energy and you can knock out basically anything really relevant in the game right now. Of course, you will need an extra energy to knock out things like Mega Sableye Tyranitar. You know, some of those GXs that have right above 270 HP. But most of the time, three energy is all you're going to need to knock out. You know, your Picaroms, your Reshizards, your Mewtwo Mews all that type of stuff. So very, very powerful attack that we have here. And that's really what the deck is gonna be built around. And then it's GX attack for two fire and two lightning. You do 170 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, but if you played the new Ends Resolve supporter card from your hand this turn, you do 170 to another Pokemon as well. So this is also a very, very powerful GX attack. Of course, you know, we can just nuke our opponents active with Fable Flare Bolt, but Crossbreak GX is very good, especially if your opponent's trying to like wall with like, a, you know, a one prizer, or if, you know, they just have a Jirachi active at the end of their turn, you can sometimes use Crossbreak to pick off maybe like a Dedenne and another one prizer, or you can like soften up a tag team or even knock out two Dedenne sometimes and get four prizes with this attack. So both these attacks just so, so strong on this thing and this is of course going to be the star of the show. Uh, having said that though we do have of course some other Pokemon in the deck. We have two copies of Turtonator from Dragon Majesty. So it's the one with the explosive jet attack for three fire. You discard any number of fire Pokemon or fire energy from your Pokemon. Just 50 for each one you discard. And really the reason we're playing this is for a few different uh, attackers out there. So think of something like Gardevoir Sylveon. If that deck does continue to see play and they start playing the Dragon Fairy Charm, uh, Turtonator can get around that. Also can get around Tag Purge from Latios GX, which is a card that a lot of the Mewtwo and Mew decks play. So Turtonator can get around those and still allow you to one-shot stuff. Um, there are a couple of other Pokemon I will just kind of briefly throw out that I'm considering to take up at least one of these spots. I think one is the new Drampa from Cosmic Eclipse. It has kind of like a stable damage output. That's why I'm thinking about that one. And also Victini Prism Star. That's another card I really do want in this list that uh, isn't in this particular uh, one that I have today. But that is also another backup one prize attacker uh, that I think definitely has some potential. So like I said, it's going to be mainly to get around those types of Pokemon that exist in the format. And of course, things like Keldeo uh, GX as well. So going on from there, we have one copy of Zero Aura GX. So we're mainly playing Zero Aura for its Thunderclap Zone ability. Our Pokemon that have Lightning Energy attached to them have no retreat cost. This is very good at cycling between different Reshiram and Zekroms without having to discard your energy, which is really nice. We can easily search this thing out with Cherish Ball whenever we need it. And also, both the attacks are somewhat relevant too. Uh, so the first attack it has for two Lightning and Colorist is 160, and then it can't attack on the next turn. You know, this can sometimes be nice against things like maybe Mewtwo Mew if they are using Lost Purge. You can go in with Zero Aura and force them to like shift gears and knock you out with something else. So that's something you can do. Uh, also, just good against one prize decks. That's one thing where Reshiram and Zekrom uh, isn't the greatest with Fable Flare Bolts. Having to discard energy to take one prize, not the greatest. So sometimes a stable 160 can be nice. And Full Voltage GX is honestly a decent GX attack in a deck like this. So for just a Lightning, you attach up the five basic energies from your discard to your Pokemon any way that you like. So this is also very good if we have to like the Dene a handful of energy away early on. You can actually use this to get set up and, you know, forego using Cross Break if you're just going against like a big tag team deck or something. And then from there, we have another GX that is going to be Rayquaza GX. So we actually do play no copies of Grass Energy in this deck whatsoever. We are not attacking with Rayquaza. We are using this purely for Stormy Winds. So whenever we bench it from our hand, uh, we can discard the top three cards of our deck and attach a basic energy from our discard to Rayquaza. This is another way we can get energy back into play uh, to basically do a plus 90 with our uh, 
Reshiram and Zekrom GX. Uh, so that's really the whole reason it's there. Like I said, we're not attacking with Ray, just trying to get energy back in play with it. So then up from there, we have three copies of the Dene GX as well. Uh, like I said, this is a turbo style of the deck. We are trying to just, you know, ends resolve welder and dump our hand in between and draw cards with the Dene. So of course we discard our hand, draw six, tax on the Dene, not too relevant, but tingly, tingly return can sometimes be useful. Uh, 50 in paralysis. Hopefully you never have to use this, but of course the, the ability that I change to discard your hand and draw six is the main reason we are playing this card. Uh, up next from there, we have one copy of Tap Coco Prism Star. You know, kind of for a similar reason as we play the, the Rayquaza GX to help us get energy back in play. So, of course, we send it to the Lost Zone, attach two lightning from our discard to two of our bench Pokemon. So, this is basically a plus 180 for your uh, Reshiram and Zekroms. Very, very good. And then from there, we have one copy of Marshadow as well. This is going to be the reset hole one. And we really aren't playing many stadiums in this deck. Uh, so that's why we are playing the Marsh Shadow here. And we can easily search out which treasure whenever we want to and, uh, you know, remove whatever stadium our opponent might have from play. So definitely going to be good, especially against decks that play Power Plant. We need a way to get rid of Power Plant. And since this is treasure searchable, we can actually get rid of those types of stadiums a little bit more consistently than if we didn't play this and just ran physical stadiums. So that's going to be it for the entire Pokemon line, guys. We're going all in with the Reshiram Zekroms, like I said. But going on to our trainer cards, we have four copies of Welder. So, of course, attach two fire from your hand and then draw three. So this is basically a plus 180 for our Reshiram and Zekroms, uh, which is nice. And one of the only ways we have in the deck to draw cards. Uh, so with Welder and an attachment, that's 100, I'm sorry, that's 270 damage. Uh, that you can get down into play if you already have two energy on your active Reshiram Zekrom. Uh, just because, like I said, uh, you do have to discard energy from the bench. That is something we have to keep in mind uh, with this deck. So, of course, Welder, you guys know why this card is good. One of the best cards in the game right now. And then from there, we have four copies of Ends Resolve as well. This is a new supporter that we are getting out of the Cosmic Eclipse set. But it says you discard the top six cards of your deck and you attach any basic energy you find there to one of your benched dragon Pokemon. So, uh, you know, we play a ton of energy in this deck, which you will see in, in a little bit. And this is another way we can just help Flutterboard with energy and take huge one hit knockouts. And of course, we do need to play Ends Resolve to get the bonus effect from Crossbreak GX as well. And yeah, it's, that's going to be it for the supporters. Every time we play a supporter with this deck, we are aiming to get energy into play. Uh, but that's why we have the Dene to kind of pick up the slack. And then we also have one copy of Heat Factory Prism Star as well for the same reason here. Uh, so we can discard a fire from hand, draw three. Self-explanatory. Uh, this is the only stadium in the deck. We are playing no copies of Giant Hearth, which might look a little bit weird for a welder-based deck. But the reason for that is we want more physical copies of fire energy in deck to be able to more consistently hit them off ends resolve. And we play a ton of fire energy already, so I don't know how much the Giant Hearth would even really help at this point. Uh, so yeah, like I said, instead of the extra physical stadiums, we're playing the Reset Hole Mars Shadow instead here. So going on to our items, we have four copies of Poke Gear 3.0. Of course, look at the top seven cards of our deck, get a supporter we find there, put it into our hand. Like I said, just to help find our welders and ends resolves a little bit better. We have four copies of Cherish Ball. This is of course to find, uh, you know, Reshiram, Zekrom, Rayquaza, Zeraora, and Dedenne. Uh, so we have a good bit of flexibility there, but then we also do have four copies of Mysterious Treasure as well. So discard a card from your hand, search your deck for a dragon or psychic Pokemon. Uh, like I said, this really makes countering Steam, specifically Power Plants in particular, much easier since we can just grab that reset hole, Marshadow. And of course, we can grab our main attacker with either of our different search cards. So the only Pokemon we are really going to struggle to find in this deck is the Tapu Koko Prism Star. Uh, for a similar reason, that's kind of the reason I don't have Big Teeny Prism Star in this list. It's very hard to actually find these non-GX one prizers. So... Coco, you're just going to have to kind of cross your fingers and hope you draw into it when you need it. That is one of the downsides, uh, you know, of this deck in standard format right now. Um, and Communication, I really don't think is a very good card here, guys. We don't play too many Pokemon in this deck, so you're not very consistently going to have a Pokemon to actually put back in to get out something like Coco or like a Victini Prism Star if you did decide to run that as well. Uh, but nevertheless, we have pretty good searching options at our disposal here right now. Up next, we have two copies of Tag Switch. So Tag Switch says we move up to two basic energies from one of our tag team Pokemon to another. So in the case of, think of something like Ends Resolve, where we dump a bunch of energy onto one of our Reshiram and Zekroms. 
Well, that's nice that we have a bunch of energy on a bench stretcher in Zekrom, but we still need energy on our active to be able to even use our attacks in the first place. So attack switch is going to be able to kind of spread our energy around a little bit better and enable us to just attack a little bit more efficiently sometimes here. Uh, you could make the argument to play energy switch in this deck since we are playing Rayquaza GX um, and things like Tapu Koko Prism Star as well. Um, I'm really not sure which way I'm leaning more favorably towards. I've tried both at this point, and they both feel good in different situations, but I like the ability to get two energy specifically, just because that is enough to get a Reshiram and Zekrom powered up in one go, potentially. Uh, so that's why we are running with this one for the moment. And then from there, we have two copies of Great Catcher to round out our trainer cards. New card that we're getting from Cosmic Eclipse. Very, very good. You discard two cards from your hand and then switch your opponent's active with one of their bench Pokemon GX or EX. So as you can tell, we are a super aggressive deck just by nature. So Great Catcher slots, you know, very nicely into here. And of course, like I mentioned earlier too, Fabled Flare Bolts is just kind of a bad attack against one prizers. So if your opponent is trying to force you into a seven or eight prize game, you can use Great Catcher to get around that and uh, you know take those big tag team knockouts whenever you want them ideally. So up next from there, we have a ton of energy to get to. So let's check this out. So for our fire energy, we have four, eight, 12, 13 copies of fire energy in total. And then for our lightning energy, we have, what's that, four and a nine total. So we have 22 energy in total in this deck. That is a lot. That's, that's like starter deck levels uh, of energy. Actually, probably more than a lot of the starter decks these days. Uh, but the reason for that is we need a ton of energy to be able to consistently hit our energies off of ends resolve. That's going to be the big thing here. So with 20 energy, one out of every three cards should be an energy. Uh, so we just need to cut as many corners as possible and just go, you know, max out these energies as much as possible. That way we can hit, you know, ideally, I think three energy off ends resolve is kind of the goal. And if you can do that somewhat consistently, you're gonna be uh, having a good time. So as you'll notice in this deck, there's really not many techs. The only, I, I guess the only tech you could really say is and here are the two Turtinators. Um, but yeah, not a whole lot of bells and whistles. We just want to cut all the extra fluff out of here and play as many energy as we can to make sure we can attack um, you know, as much as possible. And of course, uh, you can probably assume, you know, we are playing a heavier fire energy count just because that will more consistently give us access to welder, which is uh, going to be a little bit more important than having lightning energies most of the time here. So guys, that is going to be our initial look at a Reshiram and Zekrom GX deck. This deck is super aggressive and is honestly, I would say maybe even one of the greediest decks I think has ever been in the Pokemon TCG. Uh, you know, you have like, uh, essentially, you have like three stormy winds built into a supporter in the form of Ends Resolve, which is is pretty sane. Or I'm sorry, not three, but two. Um, so between that and even Rayquaza GX, you're just like digging through your deck very chaotically and just getting energy into play and just taking big one at knockouts. So it's it is you know it's a consistent deck, but at the same time it's not because sometimes you hit things you don't want to off Ends Resolve. But nevertheless, it's very very powerful and it seems like it has what it takes to go toe to toe with some of the other big decks in the pre-cosmic eclipse format uh having said that though there are definitely some other builds of this i do want to try out i do want to try out the naganatal version i actually wouldn't even mind trying a uh, build with victini from unified minds to help accelerate energy so there's a couple of different ways i still want to go but this is definitely one of the ideas i want to try out first just to abuse ends resolve and see how that ultimately would work out but of course, guys, I hope you did enjoy this look at this deck. And of course, stay tuned to the channel because we have a ton of Cosmic Eclipse content coming up over the next several weeks. But if you did enjoy this content, feel free to drop a like and a subscribe. And if you can, consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.